This is less than 97, BHDL example 65, and this will be a second example of using a data path and control unit to implement the square root algorithm that we described in lesson 95. You remember that algorithm, this is shown here, for computing an integer square root, while square is less than or equal to a, square is square plus delta, delta was delta plus 2, and then you remember that we return delta over 2 minus 1. We had this data path and control unit, data path created the left less than or equal flag and the control unit provided the load signal for A load and square load and D load and out load. Here was the data path, there were the four registers, A reg, a square root, delta, and the output root. Now remember these were different size registers. This was an 8-bit register, this was a 9-bit register, this is a 5-bit register, and this is a 4-bit register. And these two registers, square and delta, had to have initial values. That is, square needed an initial value of 1, and delta needed an initial value of 3. So we'll define a new generic register, I'll call it regr, that will have an initial value depending when you push the reset, anywhere from 0 to 3. So we have generic n, that's going to be the size of the register, number of bits in the register, and then bit 0 and bit 1 will be able to determine when we port map it. So if you set bit 0 and bit 1 both to 1, then you'll have a 0 out when you press the reset button, that is, it'll clear it. If you make bit 1, 0, and bit 0, 1, then it will be a 1. If you make them both 1s, it'll be a 3. So we have a reset in, and Q is going to be out. So this is very similar to the n bit register we have. If reset equals 1, we'll first set all the Qs to 0. And then because these are signal assignments, we can override them with Q0 getting bit 0 and Q1 getting bit 1. So the rightmost two bits of the output Q can be set at reset. So we'll use that to set our 1 and 3 for initial values. Else on the rising edge of the clock, if load is 1, Q is D, as with the regular register. So here was the data path we had. We've got a clock coming in, reset in. We need load signals for the A register, the square root register. We'll have D load for the delta register and out load. These will be coming from the control unit. Switches will be in. We'll use the switches to provide the value that we want to take the square root of. And then the less than or equal flag will be the output of this less than or equal comparator. The less than or equal flag, of course, goes to the control unit, and the output root will be the answer. So in the architecture, we have the component for our regr that we developed, and then we have our signals that we need, a, sq, 8 down to 0, as well as s, 8 down to 0. We need del, 4 down to 0, del 2, 4 down to 0, and then out in, 3 down to 0, that'll be 4 bits. And we'll define constants for our bus widths, bus width 9, 8, 5, and 4, for 9, 8, 5, and 4 bus widths. This will be 9, 8, 5, and 4. We'll need this adder, adder 8, is really a 9-bit adder, remember. The output S here is just going to be SQ, 8 down to 0, added to the output DEL, which was 5 bits, so we'll add 4 more leading bits, so we'll add the same number of bits here. Plus 2 is going to just add 2 to DEL, so DEL 2 is just DEL plus 2. Our minus 1 now here, remember, we really wanted to get uh, delta over 2 minus 1. And remember the trick we're going to use. 
we'll take del 4 down to 1. Well, 4 down to 1 is just like shifting delta 1 bit to the right. That divides by 2, and then minus 1. So this both divides delta by 2, and then subtracts 1 to get out in. And then that goes into the output register. Our little comparator here, less than or equal, if square is less than or equal to A, we'll add a leading zero to make this 8-bit A, 9 bits, to compare it to the 9-bit square, then less, less than or equal flag equals 1, else it's 0. So that's our little comparator. And then we need to uh, port map the registers. A register is going to have a bus width 8, and bit 0 and bit 1 is 0. So on reset, clear here, it'll clear it to 0. And then we just wire up load to A load, and Q goes to A. For the square root register, the load will be as Q load. This is a 9 bit, so N is going to be set to bus width 9. And on reset, we want the initial value of square to be 1, so we'll set bit 0 to 1 and bit 1 to 0. So this will be a 1 on reset, which is what we want. And Q goes to square, so there's square. For the delta register, it's going to be a 5-bit register, so we set N to bus width 5. And the initial value of delta, remember, has to be 3, so we'll set bit 0 and bit 1 both to 1. So that will be a binary 3. And then Q is del. And the load is the D load. And the output register will clear this to 0. So both these bit zeros and bit 1 are zeros. And the bus width is 4. And Q goes to root. It's going to be our output. And the load goes to outload. So that's the data path. The output is the less than or equal flag, and it's going to get its load signals from the control unit. So here's the, date, the um, state diagram for the control unit. And we'll stop in the start state of an input go. When go goes to 1, we'll go to the test state. And then we go to the update state to update the um, uh, square is square plus delta, and delta is delta plus 2, and then we go to the done state. So we'll write a square root control for this, clock and clear coming in. The start will come in, I call it STRT here. Less than or equal flag is an input, and then we have the four uh, register load signals as outputs. The state register is the usual one. We've had in all our state diagrams. No change there. Our states are start, test, update, and done in this case. And then we just go through it. Present state, uh, if you, when you're in the start state, if start equals 1, that's really I call it go here, if go equals 1, then we'll go to test, else we stay in start. When you're in test, if the less than or equal flag is 1, we go to update. Otherwise, we go to done. When you're in update, you always go back to test. And when you're in done, we'll stay in done. And then our C2 output, we have the process of present state. Remember, we have to initialize all of our outputs to 0. And then in the case of present state, when the present state is start, we want A load to be 1 so that the switch values get loaded into A when you on your way to test. When you're in test, we don't do anything, so it's just null there. We can leave everything zeros. When update, when you're in update, we want to update both square and delta. We're going to do square is is uh, square plus delta and delta is delta plus 2 at the same time. All we have to do is make sure the load signal for the square register and the load signal for delta are both set to 1. They'll both get theirs in parallel. And then when you're in done, we'll make sure that the load signal here is 1. 
So it's going to be important to remember that when we go to done, this outload is 1, and since we stay in here forever, it will stay 1. So outload is going to be 1. Okay, so there is our control unit and our data path. We can combine them into a square root where the inputs are clock, clear, go, the switches. Uh, and we're going to bring an out called done that we're going to set to our, our, our out load as we'll see. So when you're done, done is going to go to 1. We'll need that. And then the root. Here's the component for our uh, data uh, control uh, unit. And here's the data path uh, component declaration. So then we have the signals, less than flag, and the load signals that go between the data path and the control unit. Now here we set done to outload, you see. So when we get done, that is we found the root, this done signal will go high and stay high. And then we just port map the control unit and port map the data path. We can do a simulation. Here we'll set the switches to a um, hex 40, which is 64 decimal. So we know the square root should be 8. And this shows the present state and the next state going through the update test, update test, doing the calculation until outload finally goes to 1 and we latch in the answer and sure enough it's 8. Now here's a top level design that we will use to test it on the FPGA board. We'll have clock div, we'll run this at 25 megahertz. The clock 190 goes to our X7 seg BC. We'll display it in binary, so we'll have a binary BCD8, so we'll have an 8-bit output here. And um, the root, um, we will have a uh, coming out, and we have this done signal coming out to the multiplexer. So the switches are connected to the LEDs, but they're also connected to the zero input of this multiplexer. So when you set the switches, the 8-bit value of the of what you want to take the square root of will get displayed on the seven segment displayed as an 8-bit number between 0 and 255 using our binary BCD8. Then when you press button 0, that's going to make go go high, so the square root will do its calculation using the, you know, the state machine. And when it gets done, the root, the 4-bit root will show here. We'll put some leading zeros on to make it 8 bits. And then done will go high so the multiplexer switches and on the seven segment display will be displayed the square root. So the square root top is straightforward. We've got M clock coming in, switches, buttons, LD, the usual A to G and AN. So here are the signals. Uh, we got clock 25, clock 190. We have uh, X P root, and we have uh, you know the B and the P. So we will uh, set the button three to clear. Here's the root, the X. The switches go to the LED, the LEDs. Then we just port map clock div, port map, port map the square root, uh, port map uh, the mux two G, and binary BCD8 and the X7 seg B. So that's a straightforward top level design to implement this. So you should download this to the FPGA board. Uh, set the switches to whatever you want to take the square root of. They should be displayed on as a decimal number on the seven segment displays. And as soon as you push button zero, because it's running at 25 megahertz, it'll look like it's instantaneous you'll immediately display the square root on the seven segment displays.